Hello guys, uh, today our episode is about training intensity. Uh, my name is Janne Kallio, I'm here to help you to understand what does training intensity mean, what it uh, entails in, in Suunto offering, uh, how to evaluate the intensities and also a bit like what challenges the intensity metrics nowadays have. Uh, you might have seen our previous episodes, which always we start with our training model thinking. So we look at a training load, which is a combination of intensity volume uh, and then how this training load compares to your recovery state. Uh, are you able to recover? How can enhance the recovery? And then how this fit into your daily, daily life. Uh, and in order to do this, you, you probably need to plan a bit of when do the training session, when the heart and heart sessions, when, the, when you are able to recover properly and all this combination of your, your daily, daily life. And then of course the planning doesn't make sense if you don't find any kind of progress, so you try to do usually gradual effort in order to achieve some kind of goal. And in, in the end, you then go go and do, for example, race or, or achieve some other other goal that you have defined. Uh, and this is basically what we try to now follow when when we build a new features. We look at new measurement technologies that can we help on certain aspect of this this model, uh, your daily daily training. Today's session it was about training intensity. So, so we start uh, the training intensity thinking from a simple, simple uh, question: What does the intensity actually mean? So, in practice, when we talk about intensity, uh, uh, this starts from the from the model: What do we actually measure and what we try to understand? So, the idea there is that the intense training intensity uh, is based on a thinking where uh, we look at your metabolic state. What you, what, where you are in, in a certain, certain exercise intensity. So, for example, when you are working aerobically, it means that there's enough oxygen flowing uh, through your lungs uh, to your bloodstream while heart is pumping, and this oxygen is then used to burn, uh, burn uh, energy and, and create movement. And, and this aerob in aerobic intensity, you can, you can keep. Uh, working like several hours, like, you know, six hour hike as an example. And when you start to increase uh, the intensity, so you can kind of go a bit faster or, or you do more effort, at some state you start to cross over so-called aerobic threshold, which means that part of the work is already anaerobic, means that the oxygen that you take in is not anymore enough uh, to burn all that energy into movement. So in practice, there start to be part of the effort uh, anaerobic, which means that there's also lactate in your bloodstream, which is using the same energy cycle. So for example, this intensity you can sustain, depends on bit of which, which level you are, uh, for one hour or, or perhaps a bit more. Again, for example, you can run a half marathon around this anaerobic uh, intensity. And then once the intensity increases even a bit more, uh, you cross over so-called anaerobic threshold, uh, defined usually, for example, based on that your lactate starts to accumulate in your bloodstream, and, and then above this uh, is an effort that you can sustain only, only like, you know, 10-15 minutes, for example, if you are doing max, max out efforts. So these are basically like three different uh, ranges, which are divided with this uh, threshold numbers and, and part of this is of course a bit like a, a bit like a, 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 a based on a long-term research and, and defining how this could be measured and usually in, in laboratory it's more like a, a accurate methods that how you define a, a what what is certain kind of threshold where the accumulation of lactate happens or where the ventilation changes. But this is a basic principle what, what the training intensity means in, in, uh, in different, different uh, sports and, and different, uh, different uh, devices and, and platforms. Now, when we cal illustrate this, uh, these zones in, uh, in ramp up protocol, so here you can see in x axis uh, power and y axis heart rate. So when we draw a graph, once your in effort, 
uh, grows so in this time cycling power running power increases the heart rate increases in the same time this is of course very personal which level you start which which level you will reach uh, and then when we for example measure lactate you start to see some type of uh, exponential curve so or, or at least some some uh, higher numbers at the end uh, which is indication that something happens in your body so so there's a, there's a, there's not more everything is aerobic at the start and then then more anaerobic as you go and then there's a, uh, these are then divided as, as previously explained in in three different let's say ranges and uh, and uh, between them are those those uh, two different threshold uh, definitions and then uh, the question is of course that okay you have a three three zones but hey I would like to get a bit more clarity on on do I today when I do an aerobic run should I run uh, run with my heart rate being 100 or, or 120 or do I should I ride with the power 120 or, or 180 so that's why uh, Suunta and many others also divide these three distinct areas in in bit more detailed granular level zones so five five zones uh, these five zones so for example where is the line between zone one and two uh, there's no like a physiological explanation where it is uh, where aerobic and anaerobic is based on on the understanding what happens in your your body and uh, and then when you look at the soon to zone setup uh, the zone 4 to 5 limit is set as an anaerobic threshold limit uh, which you can measure in different ways but when you set up the heart rate zones or pace or power zones in your product uh, you should set the zone 4 to 5 limit into your threshold uh, if you know it and then uh, aerobic uh, threshold between zone 2 and 3 in previous episodes we talked about training load and it's, it's good to understand this zone 4 to 5 limit is being used in training load calculation the, the intensity zones are shown in, in Suunto products of course with pace, power and, and heart rate values depending which one you want to use uh, in real time in different ways and also in after analysis so for example the training zone overview page illustrates how much time you have spent in different zones uh, during this week and has that changed uh, compared to last six weeks so you, you are able to quite fast see that if you do more aerobic work for example this week uh, or less uh, VO2 uh, area work this week so you can see the difference, differences uh, uh, just by glancing these few few graphs in the training zone widgets then a a, uh, a bit of the how you actually define and set up these intensities uh, how do i know my zones now when you take Suunto watches into use we will ask uh, your age and then estimate your maximum heart rate based on this maximum heart rate we then split the zones uh, based on research at where they normally are uh, and there we have a let's say best possible estimation that that okay if no if you don't know anything else uh, this is your aerobic zone this is your anaerobic zone and so on however it's good to understand that this age-based uh, maximum heart rate uh, has a lot of variety so here is an illustration of, of where where there is a uh, population age compared to the maximum heart rate on the on y axis and each dot represents the actual data so so in practice the, the blue dots are men and red dots are women and then uh, the black line illustrates uh, what is the estimated maximum heart rate depending of the age so you can see this graph declining uh, gradually and this basically is just an example where you can see that there's not that many people who actually fit into this line meaning the maximum heart rate that we estimate based on your heart based on your age in average is okay but in principle every person has a different maximum heart rate and therefore the zones that we derive from there are also a estimate that have a lot of variance so that's why we always uh, encourage people to 
to test themselves or train train in a, in a harder intensity to evaluate the how they should change the jones and, and there's one one way of doing this is using a different test apps that Zunto provides so we have a threshold test for running for example which means that it's a bit painful you need to run uh, 20 minutes as, at maximum effort to achieve a understanding where the honorable threshold is in same way the FTP test for cyclists uh, where you ride a 20 minutes max effort and, and then we when we estimate where your anaerobic threshold as a power value would be. Same with the CSS test, which is for swimming pace, uh, understanding what is my threshold pace in swimming. Uh, all in all, you can test this. And, and of course, different sports have different, different zones, different levels. So, so uh, heart rate zones in cycling and heart rate zones in running is a bit different, but, but Again, it makes sense that those sports that you mainly do, uh, you try to try to get the tone set up correct. Uh, it helps you to understand how you are training and then also different evaluation calculations soon to provide. For example, train load metrics are then, then working accordingly. Uh, there are, of course, a different zone setup models, a different kind of guidance uh, given, by, given by different uh, different. Uh, magazines and, and medias etc so it's always good to carefully look at the guidance what is meant when we talk about a active recovery zone or or tempo zone or sweet spot uh, in this table we try to bit uh, illustrate the, the different models and, and percentages and how they are mapping to each other uh, so for example e there is a talk about what does a sweet spot training mean so it probably is around uh, zone three to four uh, and uh, and what is the person is from the anaerobic threshold uh, this is just the, trying to uh, convey the story that depending of, of how you train and what kind of coach you have and what methods you 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 have uh, when you are using Zoom the products try to match uh, the zones uh, accordingly uh, how Suunto has been setting those up and what's our guidance. Uh, zone 1 or zone 2 in, in certain, certain coaching principles might mean different thing what, what it means in Suunto. So, so it's good, good to have. I think the, the Suunto, Suunto zone setup and Suunto definition of, of uh, what is aerobic, what is anaerobic and, and so on uh, is still quite commonly used, but there might be differences depending of, of the of the training principle that you are you are following. There's of course also uh, highlighting that uh, you might use a some kind of uh, other method, or for example, just the feeling, uh, RP kind of thinking, or or lactate measurements, or other me metrics that can be used also to understand which zone levels you might might be. Now. When it comes to, to Suunto and, and, and new innovations, uh, we have tried to help uh, to quantify the, the effort and, and also partner with different companies to build a better tool for intensity metrics. So there's a few examples. So for example, we have as a Suunto Plus app, we have a fused Jones application, which tries to provide you the best possible zone to follow uh, depending what sports you do so so in practice for example here uh, when you are running uh, and let's say that you stop at the traffic lights uh, your pace will be basically zero uh, but your heart rate is still for example in zone 3 this first zone app will show your heart rate and illustrate that you are at heart rate zone 3 then let's say your heart rate drops, now it's in zone 1 and uh, there's a green light on traffic light, you start to run again uh, you immediately go into harder pace, faster pace and you are in pace zone 3 so this zone will always illustrate the highest zone depending if you are using pace, power or heart rate so you don't need to worry earlier that okay uh, the heart rate will always have a lag can I use pace in a certain places and then again when the pace drops uh, let's use the heart rate as an illustration and then the movement uh, is something that we, we published a year ago so this movement 
provides an intensity based on on uh, on activity measurement from the wrist. So when you do a sports like uh, like tennis or or uh, CrossFit or whatnot, it might be that you the work intensity is not yet not quantified so well with heart rate because there might be very rapid movements jumps sprints and so on so the movement will give you a, a total duration of how much very really high activity you have had compared to very light activity the index also quantifies the overall movement that has happened in a training session so again it helps you to if you do a, a uh, this type of circuit training or other other sports a lot uh, to start to evaluate how hard the session was and then uh, as, a, as a bit new type of intensity metric perhaps in the limiter in a sense is is the core body temperature sensor uh, Sunta has had a combat with core body temperature for quite some time now when we talk about core body temperature it basically uh, is a measurement that tries to evaluate what is your your body temperature exercise and when this increases you might need to uh, lower the intensity of the workout so so uh, this is of course important in hot conditions but also many times even in colder environment the intensity cannot exceed uh, the body temperatures uh, where you start to be you know in 40 41 42 degrees and so on so the idea there is that you are now with the core sensor connected with soon to you can actually follow this real time and see how how much the body temperature is changing and then while you are learning how this works you can then start to start to uh, uh, decrease the intensity as needed a bit earlier uh, because later it might be difficult to uh, avoid overheating and then of course if you do a heat adaptation training uh, training in hot, hot conditions uh, for a shorter period of time or to make sure that you have adapted to, to hot conditions uh, this is of course a good tool to understand the internal body temperature uh, during the exercise so it's basically also like an intensity, uh, intensity metric that might be valuable especially for athletes who go, go in, in hotter hot environment then of course the challenge is regarding this zone setup is that when we talk about intensity and intensity zones uh, uh, the challenge is that every every sport has a bit like different intensity so if you are running at a heart rate 120 uh, that same heart rate 120 might be aerobic in running but when you have a same heart rate in cycling that's actually already anaerobic so so depending on which muscle groups you're using, what type of sport it is, uh, the, the heart rate zones will differ. Now Sunto supports nowadays a, a few specific sports, so the running and cycling can be separately set as well as then the generic heart rate. So basically you can set this in three different sports. Uh, and then you need to take basically choose which is the most common sport that you use heart rate zones pace and power uh, of course are only for for running and running and, and cycling now the what is also a bit challenging is that the intensity uh, what you know are you running currently aerobically or, or is it already anaerobic this also differ uh, from day to day or even within a day so so i will talk a bit more on the on the future episode about this challenge and the research behind it uh, and then of course the the external aspects so for example if there's a uh, if you are in hot hot conditions part of the heart rate beats increase is is coming from the need to cool your body so even you are not uh, even when the heart rate is going to zone 3 or zone 4 uh, we are still working aerobically way because now the heart is just pumping so fast to, to, to cool yourself down so the understanding what is the right intensity in, in hot conditions or in altitude for example is it's much more tricky than, than just setting up the zones uh, originally somewhere even the zones can can change based on mental stress or other aspects like uh, fatigue or long training sessions uh, where we have seen a, a research done where when you do a 
ultra trail run for 100 kilometers, uh, the lactate levels can be high, the heart rate can be low, and, and so on. So it's it's a it's a it's in a sense very much more complex uh, topic than than uh, you you could you could argue when you just glance the, the whole thing. But we will talk more about these challenges in a later episode because we we believe that we have also a new type of answer for this and and the John sense episode uh, which will come come next on on this series will will tackle uh, how to actually measure the intensity without doing all these approximations now with the intensity one aspect what people many times are asking is that that uh, is, there, is it so that there's a fat burning zone and, and then there's a carbohydrate zone and, and uh, you know if I want to lose weight do I just do easy exercise or how it goes so when we look at this uh, same principle of, of increasing intensity and where the power and heart rate is increasing on the table when we look at a, a uh, uh, basic principle where you use more fat and, and then uh, where you use for example more, more carbohydrates in, in principle it goes like that 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 it lower in the, the share of fat is higher than carbohydrates but when the intensity increases the carbohydrate usage increases and, and the share of fat will start to decrease uh, however we need to remember that ha harder to you work more energy you will need and energy will consume. So in practice it also means that if you look at the total calorie volume that is, is burnt, it's of course higher uh, when you work, work more. So even when you just try to lose fat, uh, even working higher intensity, actually your, your body will burn more, more calories and then how much you eat will, will basically then define are you losing, losing weight or not. Uh, this is the challenge regarding how much fat or carbohydrates you are burning and is of course a depending on what you are what you have been consuming and what is your 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 body uh, and uh, and this might differ a lot a simple example is that if you if you are in ketosis you, you haven't eaten any carbohydrates for a while you of course burn only fat and, and not carbohydrates so that's a simple example to illustrate that it depends what you do we try to illustrate this, uh, these values also with, with our burner Sunto Plus app. So if you want to understand a bit of how much grams per hour I'm, I'm losing and, and what's the ratio, so you, can, you can look at that as well. So again, trying to give a bit of, of indication about those intensities when it comes to uh, energy, energy uh, expenditure. Uh, then when we talk about the intensity, uh, there's also a, a aspect that okay what's actually impact of my training session and and uh, this is a question which is similar for training load that the workout impact is not just about intensity but also a duration and again wh what Sunt tries to do is we try to eval provide you an indication of the impact by looking at the training intensity so uh, in this graph you can see that while the intensity increases we look at uh, the impact by saying that okay this was recovery session short duration bit bit higher intensity is aerobic session uh, and, and so on but then when we when we start to change the duration so for example we quantify uh, the individual workout as long aerobic when the duration is long enough and then heavy aerobic where the intensity and load combination with duration is, is big enough and then anaerobic hard uh, it just means that you are in higher intensity but it's also heavier load so it's a bigger effort uh, and, and the only reason why we do it is that it makes it simpler for you to try to see that okay I have now done 10 training sessions this week what type of training sessions there were what were the impacts and then additionally because as mentioned in earlier episodes, it's very difficult for us to measure uh, things like flexibility or strength or speed. Uh, we, we provide a flexibility, strength, speed uh, impacts based on what sport you do. So, so there's muscular impact uh, definition as well in play. So basically if you play, play football, 
you will have also speed and agility impact associated for this training session. So when you start to look at the overall training, you can start to, okay, uh, actually uh, recently I have done 2.5 uh, workouts that are about strength. So, so that's as simple as, as, uh, as you can get uh, when it comes to the impacts. And when we look at then a, a Zunto mobile application and, and we look at the training zone overview, uh, this this uh, is an illustration how do we show you what have you done regarding this impact. So basically you can for example see that I have had a, a two aerobic uh, sessions this week where normally I have 3.2 so that's in the last six weeks. So this again gives you a bit of glimpse that okay am I actually training now more on my, my upper end, uh, VO2 max anaerobic topics, or, or do I do more muscular impacts, or, or do I do more aerobic sessions? Uh, simple way of, of understanding a bit how you are training. And then when we look at this, there's a note also that what is your, your uh, training uh, model regarding uh, in the distribution. This refers to the, to the point that how much you train in easy and how much you train in hard intensities and there's a different volumes that you can do and these have a basic name associated with this so if you don't really know what is my training principle that i'm following there's a magazine that is talking about polarized training now soon to say i'm training polar in polarized model what does it actually mean so so let's go through this in a simple picture uh, there is again a, a intensity in this case in x-axis and, and volume, uh, so basically number of workouts that you have done. And then there's uh, these thresholds, RB threshold and unarb threshold, which I have been discussing quite a lot. So when we start to put a distribution here, so the idea here is that you, your training uh, model, the interest distribution is like long, slow distance type of training when the most of the volume is aerobic efforts and then you do very little effort in, in the middle or in the top end uh, of the intensity chart. So this is probably common when the people want to enjoy the nature, go a lot of doing hikes and, 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 uh, and uh, walks. Uh, the intensity is low, the volume can still be qu quite high. And then the opposite of this is the high intensity training, where the idea is that you do not have too many sessions uh, in, in easier intensity, but most of the se training sessions are at unarby threshold area or even higher. And uh, this is probably something that, for example, people who wants to go to the uh, indoor cycling class or aerobics uh, or play, play squash or badminton, uh, it's very common that every single session is hard. Uh, no pain, no gain kind of mentality. And, uh, and uh, there's of course chance that when you do a lot of these, uh, it's then start to, st you might start to burn out a bit. So, so this, but this is a, a one way of training, of course. Uh, and then in middle ground here is like a bit like a sweet spot. So the thinking here is that most of the training session is like semi, semi tough. Uh, quite common for people who start to run in springtime. Every single run is something that you go a bit fast. Uh, it's nice to run, run fast, not really hard, not really easy, but something between. Uh, probably the most common, common mistake if you don't look at the intensity at all, it's just the end result of your training, that everything is pretty, pretty, pretty hard. And then uh, I mentioned the polarized model by the way, I have to say the sweet spot uh, is also talked about pyramid model, so it, it, it's, a, it's one way of looking at that. But polarized uh, model here uh, means that most of the workouts are in easy intensity and then there's some amount of training in a bit harder, but there's not that much sessions that are in between. Now, there's of course research uh, done uh, by looking at these different intensity distribution models. It's of course uh, up to everybody to, to select what they do. And if you remember uh, the earlier sessions where we talked about the Maslow hierarchy of, of training, uh, how you distribute your training intensity 
might not be that important if you first don't have enough volume and load in your training. So, so the distribution is something that you might make start to sense when you when you really start training a bit more and try to look at you know how can I for example increase the the load? Do I increase the easy sessions or hard sessions and so on? But this is one example that was published. Uh, uh, while ago was it Marit Björgen who is a, a has been one of the most successful cross country skiers from Norway, and uh, this is a training uh, training intensity distribution uh, during one season, and this is quantified uh, as a low intensity, mid intensity, or high intensity training, and then some strength and speed effort as well. And, uh, and the bars you can see on the graph is basically a preparation, preparation seasons and then uh, race season uh, and, uh, and there's some specific season between. And uh, what you can easily see here that most of the training which here is in, in the biggest months is, is huge or close to 100 hours a month uh, is at low intensity. And there's very little that is in mid intensity, there's some amount of high intensity, where in, 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 in competition period uh, you can see that the ratio of high intensity is, is, is a bit higher compared to other seasons as the low intensity work is, is declined. Uh, this is of course a, a just one example and not, not any kind of uh, recommendation this is the intensity distribution you would, would use. Uh, one could claim that if you are training close to 100 hours a month, like 25 hours a week, uh, you cannot really have that type of volume if it's more, more high intensity effort. But there's also some amount of research published that even with the lower volumes, which is normal for, for you and me, uh, it could still make sense that, that you populate your, your week mainly on the lower, lower intensity work and then there's just a part is a higher intensity. So again, we do not assume that we do not recommend that you would train in a certain model, but we give you tools uh, to evaluate and quantify how you are training and how this training compares what you have done in past. It's then up to you to, to select what do you think that for you is the best way to train. Uh, we will have some, we have some guidance uh, to, to provide you some insights, but currently in the end it's, it's up to you to think that okay, for me the best training model that I will follow uh, in the intensities is, is for example polarized model or, or lower intensity effort uh, for this season. So, so again we provide you tools and guidance, uh, but not really select uh, the best possible model for you. So that's perhaps something that we will do in future, but, but not for now. Good. That was uh, it for the training intensity. I hope again you learned a bit something more new. And uh, next time we, we talk about zone sense, uh, which is definitely new for everybody who will, who will watch that episode. Thanks for your time and see you next time. Bye bye.